myself karada majit narayan rao assistant professor vijayanagar college hospete now in this session we shall understand michelson's interferometer this device is based on the principle of division of amplitude the amplitude of the light beam from an extended source is divided into two parts of equal intensity by partial reflection and refraction these beams are sent in two perpendicular directions the two beams are finally brought together after reflection from the plane mirrors to produce interference fringes now let us understand the apparatus this apparatus consisting of the mirrors m1 and m2 m1 and m2 are front silver plane mirrors the two mirrors are mounted vertically on two arms at right angles to each other the planes of the mirrors can be slightly tilted with the fine screws at their backs and m2 is fixed and m1 can be moved parallel to itself by a very sensitive micrometer screw and g1 and g2 are the two plane glass plates of equal thickness and g1 is semi silvered on the back side and is a beam splitter and whenever a beam which when being incident on g1 it is partly reflected and it is partly transmitted and g1 is inclined at an angle 45 degree to the incident beam and g2 is a compensating plate and s is the source now whenever the light from the source is rendered parallel by a lens l1 l and the falls on the glass plate g1 at an angle 45 degree at the back side of g1 and it is partly reflected along ac and it is partly transmitted along ab at the same time the reflected beam moves towards the mirror m1 when it is moved towards m1 and falls normally on it and it is reflected back along the same path and emerges out along at and further this transmitted ray ab falls normally on the mirror m2 and it is reflected back along the same path after reflection at the back surface of g1 and it moves along from along at and the emergent beams the two emergent beams have been have been derived from a single incident beam and therefore they are coherent thereby it produces interference and here it produces circular fringes when the concentric circular fringes are obtained when both the mirrors m1 and m2 are mutually perpendicular the images m1 is at m2 dash and is parallel to m1 and m2 dash and m1 from the equivalent parallel air film and the effective thickness of the air film can be varied by moving the mirror m1 parallel to itself now the telescope is set along the direction moving an angle or then the with the normal to m1 the path difference between the two coherent beam is given by delta delta is equal to 2t into cos r which is the the path difference the path difference is delta is equal to 2t cos r and the condition for the bright fringe is 2t cos r is equal to n lambda in either case r will be constant for a given values of t n and lambda and the loci of maximum of intensity will be concentric circles having their centers on the perpendicular from the telescope on m1 the circular fringes will be situated at infinity therefore they can be observed by telescope focused for infinity thus we get circular fringes of equal inclination and these circles or circular fringes are called as heidinger fringes if a dark circle appears at the center of the pattern the two rays interfere destructively if the rays 
m1 or if the mirror f1 is moved by a distance of lambda by 4 then the path difference changes by lambda by 2 the two rays interfere constructively giving a bright structure bright circle in the middle and as M1 is moved an additional distance of lambda by 4, a dark circle will appear once again. Thus, we observe the successive dark and bright circles are formed each time by moving the mirror M1 by a distance of lambda by 4. Suppose if the M1 and M2 are not exactly perpendicular, then a wedge shaped air film is formed between M1 and M2 dash. Then the fringes become practically straight. Therefore, the fringes are localized in the air film itself, thereby it produces a straight fringes. That means whenever they are perpendicular, it produces circular fringes. When they are not perpendicular, then a wedge shaped film will form and which produces straight fringes that are being formed in the vicinity. And what are this? Suppose whenever this monochromatic light, which when being replaced by white light, when white light is used, then a central fringe will be dark and the other will be colored with the white light. The fringes are observed only when the path difference is small. These fringes are important because they are used to locate the position of zero path difference. Then what is the function of the glass plate G2? The reflected ray AC passes through G1 thrice, but the transmitted ray AB passes through only once. Thus, that is why a second plate G2 of same thickness and of inclination G1 is introduced. Thus, the functioning of the glass plate G2 which is to equalize the optical path traversed by both the beams. Finally, we shall understand the applications of the interferometer. It is to determine the wavelength of monochromatic light and it is also used to determine the difference in the wavelength between the two neighboring lines. Thank you.